Monica was saying, and I will close my window here so it mutes out my noise. Um, as we go through the presentation, you might have some dual enrollment related questions come up. And we really don't have time in this presentation to address the specifics about dual enrollment. If you're interested in that, you can always contact me. My contact information will be on the last slide today. And I'm happy to set up another webinar with you or talk to you about uh, the logistics and the specificity around dual enrollment. So uh, we appreciate you um, holding those questions. Go ahead and write them down because we will try to answer them at a later time. So uh, I'm just going to get started here. This uh, initiative, Get Focused, Stay Focused, was begun in 2009. Uh, by Dr. Lauren Wintermeyer and myself. At the time, I was the dean of the dual enrollment program at Santa Barbara City College. I am now retired. And Dr. Lauren Wintermeyer was then the dual enrollment director at the college. She is now a counselor at Ventura College. So uh, let's see. Come on, slides. There we go. Uh, so I want to get started by, uh, you know, giving us something to think about. Uh, traditionally, um, students, they have to make some college-going decisions during their transitional years. They have to think about what college they want to go to, what they're going to major in, and, uh, you know, ultimately, what career are they going to be in. And, you know, we usually do this, if we are in person doing a presentation, we usually do this uh, as an interactive activity, but we can't do that today. So um, this slide just says, think about the students you know. In what order do people usually make these important choices? Are they choosing college first, major first, or career first? Um, after you think about what they do, maybe think about what they should do. And it leads us to this. Students should think about what career they're going to go into, which is what Career Pathways is all about. And that should determine what they major in, and really their major should determine what college or university they go to. And I'll tell you, uh, when I was dean for many years at Santa Barbara, I was the dean of business, and um, business was the second largest major in the school, and a lot of students tick off the box that they want to major in business or business administration, uh, and also a lot of students in our area tick off the box that says they want to go to UCSB. Well, you know, we don't get a lot of completions for business administration. And the reason is a lot of these students have no clue when they come in and start ticking those boxes that business administration requires calculus. And so right away that, you know, eliminates a whole bunch of students from actually pursuing that major. And the other thing they don't realize is that UCSB does not offer a major in business administration. They offer a major in economics, but it's really the CSUs that offer the business administration. So I wanted to give you that background, uh, you know, for this particular slide, because um, this is really flipping the paradigm of this college decision-making process. So this one shows you, you know, a survey from a few years ago of people who graduated and um, their top responses been more careful about selecting my major or choosing a different major. We have a wonderful president at Santa Barbara City College, Lori Gaskin, who some of you may know because she was up in the Bay Area. Um, and in her presentation, she tells us that she changed her major five times. Well, she is very successful today, and she did get a major that she loved, but it took her a little while. Changing her major five times can, can eat up time and money. And the other thing, if you look at the two middle uh, bars on this graph, there may be some of you in the room, if not all of you, who are involved in the Career Pathways Trust grants. And of course, work-based learning is a big part of those grants. And so um, you can see that people wished they had had more of that work-based learning experience. So Lauren and I, we were working with our high schools with the dual enrollment program, which is very large at Santa Barbara City College, we already knew the high schools, and we were already involved with all of the high school academies with dual enrollment. There's part, dual enrollment in each of the academies. 
And so this is back in 2009 when we learned about the curriculum. And when we heard about the curriculum, we, we then said, wow, you know, we're at the college, but what if, as the slide says, you know, we could have our local students enter with already an education plan and an informed declared major and knowing what career path they want to stay on. Maybe they got on it in high school, or maybe they're just getting on that career path in college, but they'll actually stay on it. And so we realized that waiting until um, our local students matriculated to us and walked through the, the doors of the college, no longer in high school, that was really too late for them to make these decisions. And so we needed to work more closely with our um, high schools all the way back to ninth grade, as you'll see in a video in a couple minutes, um, to help these students become more informed. And so get focused, stay focused is really this collaborative model, ninth grade through community college, and it can go beyond that, um, which delivers this guidance through classroom curriculum, which we'll talk about, advising and the counseling office, everybody working together with the student. So here are the initiative goals for Get Focused, Stay Focused. All entering college freshmen are college informed and career ready. They enter with an informed declared major, and the key word is informed. Uh, they know what their college or post-secondary path, career path, will be, and they have an online 10-year career and education plan. So I'm going to show you a video now that um, will explain why a 10-year plan, because you may be thinking, well, we have four years of high school, they have a four-year plan there, and we need an ed plan when they're in college, and that's going to be four to six years. Well, this video will explain why a 10-year plan. You may be asking yourself, why a 10-year plan? After all, our school already has enough students complete a four-year graduation plan. Isn't four or five years of planning enough? It is important that young people are able to envision and then plan for a productive future as a self-sufficient adult. Studies show that entering college freshmen who have a vision and plan for a career path are far more likely to graduate and successfully enter the workforce than those who enter college with the vague notion that they either have to go to college or they have a vision of themselves as good students, and therefore college is the obvious next step. Think about it, a four-year plan. It may get a student through graduation, but for far too many students, when the only goal is graduation, this is not enough to keep them in school, particularly when they find it boring or irrelevant. This fact has been cited in a report by the Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation as a key to the reason why students drop out. Without the vision of a productive future and the understanding of the consequences of not getting a good education, far too many will still drop out. These students will become the adults who then later in life say, hmm, if only someone had told me what it would be like when I was growing up. Okay, so what about the five-year plan? Yes, a five-year plan will get you into college. But as we all know, the dropout rate in college is 50%. 50% of students drop out of college or do not graduate within six years. Let's talk about another dropout statistic that really isn't talked about, but is just as insidious. What about the young people who are dropping out of the economic race from the roles of economically self-sufficient adults? They are known as Twixters. Reported in a recent Time Magazine survey, 20% of 26-year-olds live at home or they are not economically independent of their parents. You probably know sons and daughters of friends who upon graduation from college return home to live. Or, if they're not living at home, are receiving some sort of support payment from what is known as the bank of mom and dad. According to a recent CNN poll, 48% of college graduates return home to live, and 44% are living there one year later. Addressing these issues as they relate to economic self-sufficiency requires that students understand the necessity of a career focus and have a quantitative plan for their upcoming decade of transition. This translates most efficiently in the form of a quantitative and personalized 10-year plan that has real meaning for the student. 
This vision of a protective future will provide the roadmap for keeping students on course as they tackle the higher order of skills demanded of the citizens of the 21st century. Besides career exploration, through this 10-year planning process, your students will learn to project into the future Diane, the video seems to have frozen. Diane? advocate online personality assessments and computerized career exploration tools. These are usually perceived by the user as magical, therefore really not believed. Wow, look at this. The computer just said I'd be happy as a heavy-duty machine operator. The process of becoming identity achieved takes study, discussion, feedback, support, and personal observation. You don't want to short-circuit this important developmental step. A person who truly knows themselves and their own motivations will be much more likely to have the self-esteem it takes to stay the course, even under adverse situations. Young people need to learn and practice communication, interpersonal, and self-management skills necessary to succeed in today's educational and workforce settings. This goes really beyond the study skill component included in many freshman orientation settings. There is no reason that students shouldn't be exposed to such important skills such as learning to tolerate anxiety and then to act anyway, delaying gratification to achieve long-range plans, setting quantitative goals and objectives, make considered decisions after evaluating all options and analyzing the probability of success, and using visualization and affirmations to push themselves toward cherished goals. By reviewing case studies, scenarios, stories of others who have met challenges, adolescents can practice, Discuss, try on, and plan for challenging situations that are bound to come up in everyone's life. They will learn to analyze quantitatively what economic self-sufficiency equals for them. This is a really important part of the 10-year planning process. After all, how can you know what career level to prepare for if you don't know how much you need to earn? To ignore this fact of life does a disservice to our young people and the families that will someday rely on them. In addition, once students have explored this figure in a personalized way, and that figure has real meaning to them because it reflects their envisioned lifestyle, watch the almost overnight change in attitude about the value of education. Dropping out now carries consequences in a concrete number. Your students will become proactive rather than reactive in managing the changed situations of their lives. Change is inevitable. Those of us who know the systems and procedures for managing change are far more likely to land on our feet when change is forced upon us. This one skill will make young people feel more in control of their lives and therefore less prone to defeatism that many times is the precursor to dropping out. And finally, students who complete a course will understand the challenges and the benefits of a consciously planned career path. Armed with all this information, new skills and aptitudes students will be much more likely to persevere when they hit life speed bumps. Instead of dropping out, whether it's high school, college, or life, they'll instead buckle down, get the support needed to stay the course. In closing, here's a quick tip. You can probably get parent buy-in from your new course and 10-year plan effort by reminding them that in England, the adult children returning home to live are known as kippers, kids in parents' pockets eroding retirement savings. So there you have it. Um, that's the rationale for the 10-year uh, plan. Um, so we're going to go ahead now with uh, talking about what the um, California Community College Student Success Task Force recommendations say about this, as well as this report from the 21st Century Commission on the Future of Community Colleges. So we have a little bit of uh, information from them. Um, 
it's the key thing on this slide, students who entered a program of study in their first year, twice as likely to complete a certificate, degree, or transfer as students who entered a program after their first year. And again, let me reiterate, I realize that uh, likely some or, or possibly uh, most of you are involved with the Career Pathways Trust Grants, and of course, you will already know this information, but the key element that Get Focused, Stay Focused program brings is that semester-long course that really allows the students to do informed career exploration and building that online 10-year career and education plan, and then getting onto the correct pathway. Without that, they're relying on, you know, presentations of some sort and um, perhaps going on to an online survey or assessment. Um, but this is, this is comprehensive guidance in that classroom-based environment, followed up in 10th, 11th, and 12th grades by each year 16 lessons of uh, good follow-up material that we will talk about in just a second. Uh, this slide just talks about the student education plan that is now required. And we know that community colleges now have the triple SP, the Student Support Services Plan, and have submitted a student equity plan, and that students are in the process of uh, writing their ed plans with their counselors within that first year. And again, Get Focused, Stay Focused has local students entering the college with their skills-based education plan that can easily be uploaded to the college platform. Um, so again, we're talking about informed choices. Uh, guidance is the key to student success, and what we're saying here is um, the guidance, a lot of it is provided through the curriculum. And I know there's been a lot of talk about that within the community college system as well, infusing guidance into the curriculum. You can see on this slide the student to counselor ratios. I know that triple SP funding has provided for more counselors, which is a, a real uh, blessing for the community colleges, but we're still serving so many students. Whoops, here we go. Um, so we have a current model, and then on the bottom you see a model with comprehensive guidance course and the 10-year plan. Again, you're going to have access to these slides um, because Monica is recording the presentation and we'll get the slide deck to you as well. So this is accomplished with a freshman transition course in the freshman year of high school. Uh, and it should really be and or um, a three-unit student success course at the college level, perhaps part of a first-year experience type of a program, most community colleges have student success, college success courses, uh, career exploration and decision making courses, and um, you, you know, would be welcome to use the career choices and changes text for either of those, and that has with it the online 10-year plan. All right, so first students get focused. Um, now I'm going to show you a little video um, explaining that. And it will also talk about dual enrollment with this course that's offered in the Santa Barbara area. Again, if you have specific dual enrollment related questions, we will take those uh, later. Um, all right, now I'm going to minimize the screen and pull up this video in a little bit of a different way. City College already had one of the largest, most successful dual enrollment programs in the country when Dean Diane Hollins learned about the Freshman Transition Initiative developed by the George Washington University. She immediately recognized that having students create online 10-year plans in high school would consequently lead to increased enrollment and retention of full-time students at the college. Dr. Hollins knew that too often high schools focused on just getting students into college without preparing them to actually succeed there. Even if they enroll in college, 
students that don't see the relevance of education to their lives are likely to drop out. Most of the time, when students, even good students, complete high school, they really don't, they still don't have a clear picture or focus about what they want to be or what their major should be. So she took the freshman transition model one step further. Working with the Santa Barbara and Carpinteria School District, she implemented a dual enrollment freshman transition course, mandatory for all freshmen in two schools based on the freshman transition initiative. But students who come to college knowing what they want to be and having researched that are going to finish. And that's huge. That's why the investment in the ninth grade course. Freshmen are enrolled in the city college and the high school simultaneously and receive three units on their college transcripts upon completing the high school-based semester-long class. In this rigorous, in-depth course, students choose their own career path after carefully examining their strengths, interests, and lifestyle requirements. They leave with comprehensive online tenure plans that are unique to each of their chosen careers. I think the 10-year plan is a really important part of the transition between secondary and post-secondary education because students have been forced to critically analyze what drives them. It's made their education student-centered. My 10-year plan was to finish high school and go to Santa Barbara City College and um, finish my prerequisites to become a veterinarian. And I'd like to transfer to UC Davis and get graduate with a doctorate degree in veterinary science. I really want to be um, an architect, um, going to Oregon, the University of Oregon, and maybe traveling around the U.S. building different homes. I personally want to be a doctor, but it's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot of hard work and the grades to do it, but I think I can do it because I have the grades for it. Funded by the James Irvine Foundation, this unique dual enrollment initiative helps all students, including groups typically underrepresented in higher education, to view themselves as actual college students. This helps them to feel confident that they have what it takes to excel in college. I think to me, I see them um, working hard. They're getting, you know, they have they have to get the material, they have to complete the projects that they would be doing on the City College campus, and they do it. And so they're very much capable, very much willing, and I think that rather than questioning them about whether they're capable, it's encouraging them that they are. With exciting, meaningful goals and all the steps laid out to achieve them, students take high school performance far more seriously. As a result, they are more likely to successfully complete relevant post-secondary education or training. This gives them the best chance to live productive, fulfilling lives. I did all my homework, all those little lectures that we did, and where I sat in class going, why am I doing this, um, really made me like wonder how much longer am I going to have to be stuck in a classroom. But now, because of career choices, I don't think of it as me being stuck in a classroom. I think of it as me getting ready for my life. Well, when I was a freshman, I was taking pretty easy classes, you know, just kind of doing my homework, you know, in the morning, not really trying as hard. And um, after taking the class, I realized how much, like, applying yourself really matters because, like, even if you want to be a doctor or just, like, you know, a part-time job, like, your education really matters and the choices that you make now really affect how it is, like, in your future. So this year I'm taking more AP classes and a dual enrollment class. Whether or not the student down the road continues with the format that they created way back in ninth grade, they've learned how to goal, set goals. And they've learned how to check on those goals. And then hopefully they can look back and see that they've completed those goals. And that's huge. What's the result of a dual enrollment freshman transition course? Sierra Saragosa probably says it best. It seems like school and everything, different programs are always talking about how you get to college and like afterwards they never really talk about like what you do after. Freshman seminar really helped me realize that like there's life after college and everything that I'm doing now is working for after college and not just for college. <laughs>
Uh, so in Santa Barbara, all freshmen take this course. It's a semester long course in ninth grade and we do give college credit for it. It is CTE, three units of elective credit for this course. Um, and again, explaining more about that probably comes later. Um, dual enrollment is not required for Get Focused, Stay Focused at all. High schools can adopt the program without giving college credit for it. But we just wanted to point out a couple of attributes of, of having the college credit, even in ninth grade. I should say that ninth grade is early to begin dual enrollment, um, and we do only do pass, no pass grading because we don't, our intention is not to have anything adversely affect that student's transcript, um, and it's not required of students. Students opt in to getting the credit. Um, we do talk about the fact that students are in college. That removes some of that fear and that barrier for many of the students. Uh, we have found in tracking these students, they are more likely to uh, take more dual enrollment and AP courses and stretch themselves a little bit um, as a result of just knowing that they uh, already have a college transcript. So this course that we're talking about in ninth grade builds intrinsic student motivation. And the word intrinsic is important because the videos have said it a couple of times. Uh, the students learn about themselves and what they want. And that builds the intrinsic motivation for them to pick the right pathway and stay on it. So that curriculum that we're speaking about in ninth grade has, it, it takes the students through answers to these three questions. Who am I, what do I want, and how do I get there? Uh, one of the key lessons in this um, curriculum in ninth grade is a financial unit where the student has to build a budget around their chosen career pathway and learn about what it, how much it costs in their local area to buy a home or live there. And so they do extensive financial literacy work as part of that ninth grade curriculum. Then um, how does the student stay focused? That's ninth grade, that's nice, but they're only 14 years old. What happens after that? And so we created 16 lesson follow-up modules for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. In the 10th grade, Students do a little bit more career exploration. They research high demand careers. Uh, and there's, a, there's an appendage on the 10 year plan for each local area in California that has the local area, the region's high demand careers listed there so that students can actually do some exploration locally about what's available. Uh, students begin to learn about the skills based education plan. So the education plan that the students are building in this online platform is not just about what courses they need to take, it's what skills they need to have in order to be successful in their career, and then they update their plan. In 11th grade, another 16 lessons, students do some research with STEM careers. They learn how to choose the correct major for their chosen career, a really important element, and they research affordable colleges and they learn more about financial aid. They keep learning about the skills-based education plan and they update their 10-year plan. In the 12th grade, the 16 lessons, students complete their skills-based education plan, write their college applications letters in the fall, create their resumes, do mock interviews, and learn about student support services at the chosen post-secondary institutions completing their FAFSA, updating their plan. Um, of course, college completion has become a national priority. Um, this program, uh, the book that you're seeing on the screen, is a manual uh, that has everything in it from teacher instructions for the modules to how to implement the program at the high school and so forth. The outcomes for schools for this, increased attendance um, at the high school level, of course, decreased dropout rates, um, higher persistence rates at the college, 
school A through G completion rates, we've seen them go up. Um, more AP classes, dual enrollment classes are being taken. And um, of course, the goal is students staying on their chosen career pathway. Um, so I have a video here, but I'm, I'm actually going to skip it just for the sake of time. Um, it will be available to you through Monica. And it really shows the students at Carpentria High School three years later. Some of the students you saw in the video just a moment ago are on this uh, subsequent video. But I'm, I'm going to skip that for the sake of time. Uh, the bottom line for this program, student self-advocacy. So we want students who actually know how to navigate the system of college. Uh, I used to say, if a student can navigate the system of college, they deserve their degree. <laughs> now, that probably wasn't the right thing for a dean to be saying. They need to have the grades. But we find that so many of them don't know a thing about how to get through college. Also, economic and self-sufficiency. Uh, this is a video I want you to see. Dr. David Cash, superintendent of the Santa Barbara Unified School District, has some closing comments about get focused, stay focused. And then uh, after this video uh, and a couple more slides, we'll open it up to questions. Get focused, stay focused. I, I ask myself and I ask anybody that will listen to me four very specific questions. Is school considered boring and irrelevant to many of the students in our K 12 uh, schools? The answer to that is absolutely. Um, I don't know about you, but I talk to kids each and every day and they tell me, um, yeah, Dr. Cash, this is pretty boring and I really don't understand how what I'm doing now is going to be relevant to what happens to me next. I also ask the question, has the rush to cover content come at the expense of some purposeful instruction and what we know are important 21st century skills? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is also absolutely. All of us, I believe, um, are very fortunate to be moving away from that mile-long inch deep approach to a much more rigorous, complex, uh, critical thinking, common core state standards. The third question I ask is, are we consistently communicating to students the value of self-sufficiency? And the answer to that is no. Well, I, I don't really, at this point, care what you think about scaffolding and how important it is. It is very important for some of our English learners to be certain. But we have scaffolded with our kids to death, quite frankly. They just sit and wait for the teacher to tell them, now that you've done this, then you do that. Um, and we need to move away from that. And the last question I ask is that we give the students the time to personalize their learning to give it relevance and purpose. And the answer to that, unfortunately, also has been no. On the extent, you know, our kids, they, especially in the secondary settings, they rush from class to class, taking courses to them that appear to be completely unrelated, disconnected. Teachers don't talk to each other. And they're trying to figure out how is what I'm doing in period one related to period four related to what I want to do when I'm done with high school. So when I answer those questions, um, I, I'm so excited to be able to say that there is a, a path for us to take as K-12 educators. And in Santa Barbara, it's the Get, get Focus, Stay Focus program. Programs are great, but what's more important than any program are the people that would implement that program. And it's really important to have enthusiastic teachers involved in this process. And one of the great things about Get Focus, Stay Focus is that it is a series of purposeful instruction. It gives students purposeful experiences on how to make decisions about what happens next in their life. Are these values um, that we find um, students get exposed to and learn about in Get Focus, Stay Focus important? self-sufficiency, having a vision for the future, understanding what it takes to be a good student, and understanding the consequences of their decisions. My son was very fortunate to have been a student athlete, and as a senior in high school, there was no, in our former, where I worked for previously, get focused, stay focused, 
Uh, he had the opportunity to play a sport in college and had a, had an athletic scholarship. And unbeknownst to his mother and I, in the fall of his senior year, he called the academic counselor at the college where he was going to go play baseball and asked the following question. What are the lowest grades that I can get and still be eligible to play baseball? <laughs> and then he went and got those grades. And so here is his wife, uh, my wife, his mother, who's also a teacher, and myself very proudly at the orientation for all student athletes at this university. And, uh, and the academic counselor asked, I, 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 I really would like, in front of everybody, I'd really like to meet the parents of Sterling Cash. So I you know my chest is kind of pumps up, raise my hand, I go, hey, that's me. And she says in front of everybody, your son asked us on October 29th, what were the lowest grades he could get to still be able to play baseball? And my, I looked over at my wife and watched her slowly take away her seat and realized um, that without having a career choices type of program in our district, my son had made a very purposeful decision about what his steps would be in getting into college. Um, not something that any one of us would be very proud of. And so I still, you know, with that first experience, asked myself, do all of our kids have a skill set to be self-sufficient, to have a vision for the future, to understand what it takes to be a good student, and a vision of not just going to college, because if, if you work in a high school setting, you know, you talk to kids, they're all going to go to college. What does it take to be successful in that college? What does it take to be successful in getting to where they want to be after they leave college? And most importantly to me, what I love about Get Focus, Stay Focus, and I should tell you that it is a graduation requirement for every student in my district, successful completion of that course. One of my favorite moments this past year was yeah, standing in a class and asking a student, sat down at a computer lab, I had a student on the right, a student on the left, asked the student on the right, how's it going, what do you think about what's happening to you in this class? He says, oh, this is great, and I really, you know, before it started, I, I knew that I wanted to be an emergency room physician, and as I explored this, I discovered that you have to do well in science, and I hate science. <laughs> um, and so now I've decided instead what I'm interested in doing is being an electrician. I turned to the guy next to me, I said, how's it going for you? And he said, oh, this is horrible. This has just been a nightmare for me. And I feel, whoa, and I'm very quiet so that the teacher could not know, you know what, what's going on, why has it been a nightmare to you? And his response was, was very clear. He said, I had no idea how rich my parents were. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? He said, you know how much it costs to buy a home in Santa Barbara? He says, yeah, I, I do know how much it costs. <laughs> He said, I'm going to not only really have to go to undergrad, I'm probably going to have to go to graduate school. I'm going to have to make about eighty to $100,000 a year in order to live in Santa Barbara. And I thought to myself, bingo. Boy, if all I get out of Get Focus, Stay Focus, if all I get are those two kids understanding the consequences of the decisions that they make each and every day on what they want to do in the future, it's worth every single human and physical resource that we've committed to that program. Okay. Go back to the slides. So again, here are the um, here are the uh, goals for our initiative. Uh, when we say college and career ready, we're speaking mostly about being college informed and career uh, informed ready. This is not a college remedi you know, a remediation type of a program, but we do realize that we're in the 70% on students needing remediation once they get to college, and the program does continually remind students they need to be at grade level in English and math, but it gives them the college information they need. Informed declared major, they know what that uh, post-secondary pathway is, and they have their 10-year career and education plan. Um, here is our contact information for myself and for Dr. Monica Carmo, who's going to jump back into the call and help guide us through the questions. Okay, and I'll go ahead and mute everybody.
we have a full house. It's taking me a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, Randy, I'll open it up to you first since you have a big forum of participants. Do you want to um, take turns and maybe have people come up to the computer and go ahead and ask any questions that they have of Dr. Holmes or myself? Um, well, I'll, I'll have them ask me here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we sure can. I hear you. Okay, so if, if people ask me questions, then I can um, I can repeat them. Who teaches the course, and what is it matched up with the by so um, the question is, who teaches the course, and what is it matched up with at Carpinteria High School? Um, so I, I'm assuming you mean uh, matched up semester to semester, uh, fall to spring. So the uh, course is taught by high school teachers. And um, again, I mentioned we do give college credit for it. Uh, it is a CTE course at our college, so the minimum qualifications are the bachelor's degree and two years of experience. And so we have the high school teachers teaching it. But that's a very important question because there are a lot of teachers at the high schools. This course needs to be taught by uh, a willing teacher who's enthusiastic about the material and really the concept of what the program is. Uh, it's backed up to health in the Santa Barbara and Carpinteria school districts, so students have to have a semester of health. And uh, and Santa Barbara, they did away with driver's ed. I think they had been wanting to, you know, do that for a while. Um, but, you know, again, I want to reiterate the importance of having um, really the best teachers in the class. Natalie? So they said it was an elective class, not a mandatory class, correct? Um, it's, it's an elective class, not a mandatory class, correct? Well, the graduation requirement in both school districts that we work in, so every single freshman must take the class. So I guess my second follow-up question would be, is that politically, how did that happen? <laughs> so uh, politically, how'd you do that? Well, we, you know, it's interesting about that. We didn't, we didn't actually do it. They, uh, you know, all of a sudden we heard that they had made this a graduation requirement. So that was all done, again, I'm from the college, it was all done uh, through the high school and um, going to their board. Uh, you heard the, the uh, superintendent of, Carpen of Santa Barbara Unified. Um, he, he believes in the concepts around the program. So they made a presentation to their board. How are the modules embedded in 10th, 11th, 12th, 11th, 12th, 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 Yes, um, so the the concept behind Get Focused, Stay Focused is, is that, and, and this becomes a, a real student equity issue, is that every single student is exposed to the material all through high school. So in uh, 10th grade, the recommendation is that it's embedded in English, uh, because every student has to have English, 11th grade, history or social studies, or whatever is required there, and then in 12th grade, economics. But at some schools that may be smaller, it could be embedded in, in English all the way through. And I know that uh, Carpinteria is, they're starting, I, I don't know if it's extended a homeroom, they're, they're, they're starting a different sort of bell schedule and uh, they're gonna uh, experiment with a couple different ways. I think it has to work with whatever um, bell schedule and mechanisms that the high school has. But every student needs to be exposed to these 16 lessons as well as that semester long course. So, and anecdotally, or just kind of, you know, what preliminary data you've collected, are you seeing anything different in terms of graduation rates, matriculation rates coming out of, out of the high schools that you're targeting? Yes, um, so Carpentria High School has some good statistics. They were in the um, in their A to G course completion uh, rates. They were in the like the 27 percent completion. They are now about 48, 49 percent completion. Um, all schools that we have been exposed to that I know about, Monica can jump in here as well, um, have increased attendance at the high school. 
um, which also helps their bottom line a bit. And um, the, drop, the, the dropout rates for Santa Barbara and Carpinteria were never low. Now, it, in different parts of the state, that's a very different statistic. Uh, but dropout rates in our area were never really an issue. Attendance rates, though, were, and suspension rates and so on were an issue. And those have, um, you know, subsided greatly since the beginning of the program. Uh, the students who are, who have matriculated, um, you know, remember we started in 2009, but the modules didn't really get started until like 2012, because we had to develop the modules. Um, so students were taking the ninth grade class, but, but not everybody was exposed to these modules. So when they began to be implemented at Carpinteria High School, I think one of the, one of the coolest things that I've heard as a result of the program is that students um, who, were, who had had the career choices in the freshman year, uh, they, they now see the 10th grade students getting the modules, but they're in 11th grade or 12th grade, and they, they're not getting any modules because they were being implemented one uh, class at a time, uh, decided to form a club. And after school, um, I think they called it the Get Focus, Stay Focus College Bound Club, and they wanted access to that, those lessons, um, and so they did it themselves. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that this is all a work in progress, and we are seeing students um, matriculating with these 10-year plans and coming into the college counselors with their plan and working with the college counselors to get that information uploaded. But everything starts in ninth grade at a high school, and then the uh, modules kick in after that. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Natalie? So my last question would be, if it, the modules launched in 2012, and that's when the Common Core came out, where does modules align with Common Core directives? Um, are those modules aligned with Common Core? So it looks like they came online about the same time Common Core was starting to roll down. That's exactly correct. Um, all of three of the modules are aligned with the English language arts um, standards of Common Core and the career college readiness standards. Anyone? We want to ask about the CT equivalency for the teacher teaching the course? No? Okay. That looks like it for the room here. I'm sorry, Eva. So two, two issues there. If you're getting high school credit for it, and that they don't have the teaching credential, the answer is no. If it's kind of, you should probably do this. It's like an extra period of day or they're not counting that. And then community colleges, straight community college, then the masters. But to be during the instructional day and you get credit to both institutions, they have to meet both sets of qualifications, right? So would you repeat what was said there? Um, so we're just clarifying that in order to actually be, so to be taking the course during the day and to get credit in both systems, the teacher has to meet both the credentialing requirements of the high school and the minimum qualifications for the community college. That is correct. It's like any school. Right, yeah, no different in that regard. I, you, know, I, you know, I know that we're, we really, we don't have time to get into all the dual enrollment issues as we said, but um, <laughs> we chose this to be housed in a CTE discipline within the business division rather than in personal development, which requires the counseling, master's in counseling. Because if every student is going to get the material, there, there aren't enough counselors to teach the course. Hello? No, we're here. Um, I heard of, of... Randy, this is Sarah Boland from Contra Costa College. I had a question. Okay. Um, I was curious which software is being used for the 10-year ed plan. You said it's online. I'm just curious how that will match up with the community college initiatives for SSSP. It's a proprietary software that has been developed by the company, Academic Innovation. And um, at this point, it isn't, um, you know, when I say things can be transferred from the student's online 10-year ten, plan, um, you know, the information is being um, 
is being transferred, if you will. If there's not a, a there's not an easy solution at the moment for just a click uh, to populate the um, college platform. Um, so it's a student bringing in their information to the counselor, and then then they're putting it into the SCP. Thank you. Any other questions in the room or anyone else online? Any of our remote call-in folks, do you have any questions for us? Hey, Diane, we have a question here. Have you given any thought to having a college course that could actually pick up and reinforce what they did in high school once they arrive at the college campus? Yes, that's a very good question and observation. So uh, Lauren and, and myself and Mindy developed the module curriculum. And what we, what we know is needed is um, probably about a unit to a unit and a half type course as a follow-up for students who've had all of this in high school. That has, you know, we're working on it. It hasn't been released yet. So that could be, so like LMC, I know is doing a three-unit incoming course for everyone that could be embedded in that larger three-unit course that you're doing. Yeah. Right, and, and I just want to add as well that this course, Career Choices and Changes, it is used at the college level as well, so it doesn't have to be, um, you know, high school related at all. For example, Dr. Lauren Wintermeyer teaches it at Ventura College. We have we have courses at several colleges within California that use it for their students at the college level with nothing to do with the high school. So it is a three-unit UC CSU transferable course at some of the community colleges in California. You did say UC transferable, correct? Yes, UC CSU transferable. Is that, I mean, at all campuses or just yes. some campuses in the UC? Because they're not always centralized on that. Can I, can I address that uh, for a second? I'll give you an example. Um, at Santa Barbara City College, we have the College Success Course, PD100, uh, that is UC CSU transferable, and we have PD110, um, which is Career Exploration and Decision Making, which is CSU transferable. The, the curriculum, Career Choices and Changes, has been selected by um, an instructor teaching the, the PD100, the College Success Course. That's the curriculum she selected for that course um, because it has in it student uh, study tips and, and all of the rest of it uh, that would go along with the College Success Course as well as all the elements that we've described today. Um, and the course that uh, Lauren taught at Santa Barbara City College was the PD-110 course, and she selected the text career choices and changes for that course. So these at our college were already existing courses. Um, Monica, uh, there may be colleges around the state that have actually put a new course through curriculum committee, but I'm not familiar with which colleges that would be. And yeah, and I'm happy to pro provide, you know, a list of the colleges or if anybody has any specific questions about which colleges are using it and in what format, you're more than welcome to email me. This is going to be helpful in terms of taking this to our own faculty, right? Right. So in your region, for example, Berkeley City College, um, has this course structured under their counseling department. And so they have the course there, and they also have it at Berkeley High School. So the students at Berkeley High School are earning dual enrollment credit, and that has been since spring of 2014. Uh, this is kind of a question, so I, you, you have the course listed under business. How, how difficult was it politically to move that with your, with your uh, counseling department? Um, another, that's another really good question. Um, 
At Santa Barbara City College, we already had in place a department for, for many years called Professional Development Studies. Uh, counseling, a lot, in a lot of colleges it's under personal development, the counseling courses. This is professional development studies. And we already had a course on the books, and, and it's a CTE course that's housed in the business, uh, our CTE department housed in the business, business division. So we had a course titled Personal Planning already. So we went to curriculum committee and did a course modification because it was like a unit and a half course. And we made it a three unit course, adding the objectives that would align with the, with the curriculum. Um, and we talked to the counseling department prior to going to curriculum committee. And we assured the counseling department that the curriculum that's being used, this course, personal planning, would have no psychometrics in it at all. So it doesn't go near Myers-Briggs or anything like that. And um, they were okay because we already, we happened to already have had the course on the books and they allowed that course modification to go through, bumping it up to three units. I have a question, guys. Just question, letting join your time the fifth and the sixth. Is that me? Hello? 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 <laughs> I can hear I can hear the hello. Hello, hello. Um, we're wondering if uh, I see we're, we're getting an echo of me here now. Can you hear me okay? No, I can hear you, but I can hear me too. That's the problem. <laughs> and I, I, I listen to myself so much already. <laughs> Can you, Can hear, you the hear the echo? echo? Uh, we I'll can't hear it. Okay, okay well, well, then I'll go ahead. ahead. Um, um, when you when come you up in the fifth and the sixth for the, for the training, training, we're wondering, we're wondering if there's a way to set up a side conversation with some of our counseling and college folks who probably won't be doing the training, but who would be very good for them to get some face time to actually hear what you've been doing. Um, or maybe even CC, no, we actually won't be at CCCA always, so. But, but. Well, I will be at, Strengthening Student Success in Oakland, um, arriving on the 7th and leaving on the 9th. And we do a presentation there on Thursday at 145. Um, and Lauren, Lauren will be there as well as some of our other SB 1070 directors around the state. Um, I will be at CCC AOE, but we hear you will not be there. But, um, and I won't be coming to the training on the 5th. We'll be there, but I think the people that need to hear this are like some of our counseling and other folks that we have to carry this to if we want to look at this more. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking the fifth and the sixth. If you, if, I, don't, I don't know who's coming to do the training here, but if when you're here, we might be able to set something up around that time frame. Yeah, and I think um, to answer that question, um, Dr. Lauren Wintermeyer, because she is a counselor and she teaches the course and she used to be a, the dual enrollment coordinator, she she really is the person that would be best to lead that. And she just recently, um, last week, and also has some dates on the book, is leading counselor um, actual, actual training in the Ventura area so that she can coach the counselors on how to use the 10-year plan, how, how to support the instruction in the classroom, and everything that you know is involved in the role of the counselor. And so I would be happy to facilitate that, oh, maybe a webinar just like we're doing right now with Lauren and your counselors. Yeah, I think, I think, I think we might be interested in looking at that. We can talk about it with the group here and get a sense of what they think you know, makes sense. Um, I mean, I think the, a lot of the high school folks are pretty sold. Um, that they want to do this, not all of them, but a lot of them are. So I think the question is then carrying it to the colleges and getting the colleges to sign off because it's still pretty new for a lot of the colleges. Right. And we do have our Get Focused, Stay Focused conference that's coming up this January 7th and 8th at Santa Barbara City College. So that is a very good resource to send 
everyone that's involved because we are going to have an institute for everybody. We're going to have one that's just for the counselors, that's just for the principals, that's just for the leadership at the college level. And so it'll, it would be very valuable if you could send teams to the Get Focused, Stay Focused conference. We'll look at those dates. Perfect. And I will definitely send all of that information in a follow-up email. So, Randy, I'll coordinate with you on, on getting everyone's email, and I can send out all that information. Okay. And we can coordinate through our TCPT grants as well, because I think we're, we're going to want to get as you know, many college people in the, in the room as possible. And don't forget that we'll be in Oakland for strengthening student success. Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of short turnaround to get some of the folks I think we need there. Okay. Yeah. We'll look at it though and let you know. Any other questions here in the room? So I think I think that's it for us guys today. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to do this for us. It was very helpful. Our pleasure. All right. Okay, thank you very much and we will be in touch. Have a great evening, everyone.